Okay, today we're going to talk about some beginner SEO, stepping back from the intermediate and advanced topics. And we're going to look at this question here in the SEO subreddit. Someone is asking about programming languages, basically. It's a poorly worded question, but it sparks an interesting conversation. Um, programming languages and their like relation to SEO. So um, I think the best way to explain this is probably looking at a diagram over here that I found that was super... Uh, you know, allow me to explain, explain this concept pretty easily. Um, background, of course, SEO since 2009, been in SEO for longer than 99% of people. Um, and then also like on the computer science technical side, went to school for computer science, University of Toronto, uh, you know, like a top 20 school in the world. So uh, not to toot my own horn, but like a lot of people in this space talk out of the, their ass. And so I just want to like be upfront, like these are my credentials. Anyways, enough about me. Let's talk about um, programming and SEO. So we got basically static web pages like web 1.0 and then we have like dynamic stuff that's like generated uh, with like a back end uh, being queried with some sort of programming language and those are like dynamically loaded so in web point web 1.0 like web pages say like early 2000s um like late 90s when i initially got on the internet and i'm sure many of you basically there was no database for the most part a lot of web pages didn't use a database the, the language was kind of like wrote in html and css and like it was just like very plain there's no javascript at the time like very limited if any um but it basically just static plain simple websites a few images at most and how that works is basically you would go to a web page you, you send a uh, request uh from the web server and um and these backwards and yeah, these are these arrows are backwards request the web server and then you get a response to the web server back to the web page just html give me the html here's the html back and then the html within that you would send more requests and, and replies for like the images and all the resources within so it'd be like multiple requests it's just like a simplified version but yeah that is backwards dynamic right now this is like more modern this is where you're getting into languages um because up here you don't really use them like python of course python is like a newer language um you don't use anything like php or you don't need to use that because it's static there's nothing to query the the web page when i look at it is, is the same as when you look at it unlike something like facebook.com when you're logged in we all see a different news feed that's the exact opposite of static and so even though a lot of web pages are still static, they're like set up in dynamic ways, like WordPress, for example, like there's fully, there's full capabilities within there of, of going to a WordPress site and customizing it for each user. But generally most of them are, are actually set up static. So it's like kind of overkill, which is why like a buddy of mine recently, he's like looking at a website he hasn't touched for like five years. We were joking, like if that was a WordPress site, it would have been hacked so many times just because of like, you know, vulnerabilities in PHP and WordPress. It's... We sometimes think that, you know, why do we even bother using something like WordPress when it's not necessary? You're setting up a site that you're not going to touch for ages on the back burner, which many of us have. You know, we all have dozens or hundreds of domains, some of us even thousands. Um, I know I know who you are, my listeners, my regular listeners. Some of you guys have thousands for sure. And when you have all these websites you don't really pay attention to or kind of forget about, they're not really urgent. Maybe there's like a client or something, but no, a client's kind of a bad example. It's just some sites you just do not touch. You set up, you kind of forget. Maybe the domain's aging or whatever. You're just holding. You have some sort of like content up. You're just letting it age. Um, you know, so many of them get hacked because they use like, you know, WordPress or something. But anyways, I don't want to turn this into like a thing against WordPress right now. That's not the point of this video. But the point being that, you know, don't let WordPress sites confuse you, uh, even though they're, they're set up with the capabilities to be dynamic, even though a lot of them act as static. So basically, you go to the web page, you send a request to the web server. The web server is going to query the language on the back end. This is where Python comes into play. You can use PHP, you can use Python. Um, there's like a whole bunch of all the, like the, the Node.js stuff that there is right now. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff that I can't even keep up with since like I graduated from school a few years ago. It's, it's crazy how much it advances and changes. But like Python still pretty big. PHP still there. I think it's on a down, downward trend. You can look that up. I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk about that, but Python here, when referring to this question, Python would be here. And then it queries, gets the files, get, but more importantly, gets the info from the database to customize this, right? So if you're talking about like an Instagram feed, you know, you got to figure out what to show. And so you're going to basically pull uh, everyone that you follow on Instagram, for example, and then the, then the system is going to figure out what to show on the feed in here. And then basically compile that as HTML, send it back to the web server. And then it's it sends back this way. So um, process PHP file. Yes, it's kind of it's kind of confusing. Again, this web page looks like it has some issues because the arrow, arrows were wrong up here. 
um, but you're not sending back PHP. It's a process. It's processed by PHP, but it's actually an HTML file. Um, yeah, I just wish that someone had like a better. Just like, I wish I could access some of my old lecture slides, honestly, for this video. But from here to here, it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Different than the JavaScript back here because there's you can have you can build sites with JavaScript in the back end and the front end. And so most sites use JavaScript in the front end, but some can actually power it in the back end with JavaScript too, instead of like Python or PHP. And so back to SEO. Let's bring this back, step back a second here. When I'm addressing something that's like in a beginner level topic, um, it's best to just simplify it and, and just say that you know what? They're pretty much all the same. You know, real this this matters, but this only matters if you got, you know. 10, 20, 30, 40 million in the bank. Like it, 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 that's when it starts to matter. If you're really getting to become a big site, you know, you're overseeing an engineering department of like 10 guys that are paid a quarter million a year each. You know, you got a, like board of directors, you got a bunch of investors, like well-named invest. Like that's when you start caring about this. If you don't have that, if you're just a one-man shop, two-man shop, like you and your brother, you and your cousin, you and your buddy, like building a site, this doesn't really matter. Learn whatever's easy to learn. That's going to be, that's going to be Python. Python's pretty easy to learn. There's you could argue there's all languages, et cetera. You could always argue all this. Like people in computer science can can dispute almost anything with any sort of like plain simplified top like answer with with anything like this. Um, but I'm trying to just get it through to the beginners that what really matters, it's like 99% here and 1% here. Yeah, the 1% here starts to matter um, when you have the 99% figured out really well. But most people don't. Most people can't even figure out their image compression to like lossy versus lossless. Like it's it's just it's just not worth thinking about and dwelling over what language to build in. Um, there's options for getting faster and whatnot, but again, like there's so many easy ways to speed up even a like even the most unoptimal programming language that you can just you can just kind of solve like later on, like after you raise your Series A seed round or not seed round your Series A or your seed round. Really, these like some of these seed rounds are becoming more like a Series A uh, anymore. But basically, this is just something you can worry about later. Figure out like how to make your HTML look good, and you can do that with any language. But basically, PHP, Python, you basically build the HTML here, and then and then shoot it back. Uh, with Python, you use like Django is a pretty common one. Uh, there's of course better options now, but Django is a pretty big one. Um, and you use like HTML templates, and you write in HTML, and then uh, the, you can serve the HTML this way and uh, back to the user. But anyways. Hope this wasn't too complicated, but I wanted to answer this just because like there's a lot of idiots arguing about this, um, and I'm sure the comments are only going to get worse. But uh, that's all for now. Enjoy.